Thank you. The next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 5165 in the name of Emma Harper and celebrating International Nurses Day on 12 May 2017. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Can I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press their request to speak buttons now? I call on Emma Harper to open the debate. Ms Harper, seven minutes or thereabouts, please. Thank you. Thank you, President Officer. I am really pleased to be leading the members' debate today celebrating International Nurses Day, which happens to be on Friday. The motion states that nurses are the single largest group of healthcare professionals in the UK. They are estimated uh, at greater than 20 million nurses and midwives across the world, and they account for 52% of the healthcare workforce. The motion also acknowledges that nursing encompasses the autonomous collaborative care of individuals of all ages, families and communities in all settings. And it includes the promotion of physical and mental health, prevention of illness and care of people who are ill, disabled and who are dying. Outstanding care happens everywhere and at every stage of life in Scotland and across the world. The International Council of Nurses presented a paper with case histories about the work that nurses do in different parts of the world. From HIV treatment and care in South Africa, Family Partnership for Improved Maternal Care in Urban USA, Access and Food Aid in Syria, ba uh, ba Bariatric Best Perioperative Practice in Australia, and Caring for People Who Have Contracted Ebola Virus in Sierra Leone to developing community respiratory early warning scoring systems for persons with chronic lung health problems in NHS of recent Galloway. I have my own case history. I am a nurse. Prior to Hollywood, Holyrood 2015, Holyrood, Hollywood was the other place I worked. Um, I was a nurse for 33 years and my specialties are surgery and education. Even though I'm not working as a nurse currently, that doesn't stop me thinking like and approaching problems with my nurse heed on. My sisters are nurses too, and between us, we have 130 years of nursing experience. And us Harper sisters have contributed to more than a quarter of a million nursing hours of patient care. Having a career in nursing allows us all to travel internationally and work and learn from other professionals and other cultures about the best way to care for people. Us sisters have worked with medical personnel from all across the world. The medical community is wholly international and what we learn from each other truly contributes to enhancing the lives of not only our patients but ourselves. According to the Royal College of Nursing, nurses are the superheroes of healthcare. I met two superheroes a couple of weeks ago. Marcia Ramsey, who is Director of Operations for Alzheimer's Scotland, and Claire Stroyne, the Wigtonshire Service Manager of the recently opened Dementia Resource Centre in Stranraer. Both are nurses and both are proud of the new facility and the potential opportunity to develop this great service of support for people with a diagnosis of dementia, as well as support for their families. May the 12th is chosen date to celebrate International Nurses, at Nurses Day, as it is the birthday of Florence Nightingale. Florence is probably one of the most famous nurses. She modernised the care approach during the Victorian age and was instrumental in improving care by implementing the new mathematical science of statistical analysis. There are other famous nurses worth celebrating also. Mary Seacole, who's Jamaican born, she was a contemporary of Florence Nightingale. Both had different approaches to the care for the soldiers, but both had the same idea and goal to reduce the mortality of the people that they were caring for. Both proved to be formidable women who worked to save the lives of the soldiers. Let's also celebrate Pauline Cafferkey, who almost lost her life when she contracted Ebola hemorrhagic virus when caring for victims of the virus in Sierra Leone. And I think one of my colleagues is going to talk a wee bit more about Pauline Cafferkey in a wee while. Each year, the International Councils of Nurses celebrates by focusing on a specific theme. And this year, the theme is titled Nurses, a Voice to Lead, Achieving Sustainable Development Goals. And the Sustainable Development Goals are um, 
SDGs, and they are a set of 17 goals created by the World Health Organization and the United Nations. The goals tackle issues that affect people, property, peace, partnership, and the planet. Goal number three is titled Good Health and Wellbeing, but all goals are linked directly mm -hmm. to nursing and promoting optimization of the people's lives by addressing poverty, hunger, education and promoting gender equality, to name the first few goals. David and Catherine um, at the Scotland Malawi stand next to the members block, they are support, uh, supporting the sustainable development goals as well. And if you haven't visited them at, next to the members lobby and had your photo taken, I would urge members to do that, to learn about what the sustainable goals are in relationship with Scotland and Malawi. I don't have time to explain all 17 goals, but I would urge anyone to read more about the specific targets to be achieved over the next 15 years. Nurses are key to partnering with people so that they work to achieve the WHO and UN SDGs. These are not new tasks to the already challenging workday that face nurses across primary and acute care. The international goal of nurses the International Council of Nurses wants to make it clear that these sustainable development goals are already embedded in the current practice across the globe, and they want to highlight that for us all. I urge, I urge everyone to celebrate the work of nurses. Thank your nurses when you meet them. Presiding officer, I thank the Scottish Government for choosing to keep the bursary for nurses to support them during training at universities and Scottish hospitals. A career in nursing is hugely satisfying. My three sisters and I already testify to that. Promoting and supporting men and women to step into nursing should be continued by the Scottish Government. And I notice the sun shining on me right now. <laughs> I call on everyone to mark International Nurses Day by doing wee things. Share a message of support on social media. Watch and share the RCN support video as it contains messages of thanks from people who have received care from nurses across many specialties or donate to a nurse charity. Finally, presiding officer, I reiterate this to nurses across the world and certainly here at home. You are already contributing to the sustainable development goals. Let's just tell everyone, celebrate that and celebrate International Nurses' Days. Presiding officer, I move this motion. Thank you. I call Claire Hockey to be followed by Donald Cameron. Ms Hockey, please. Thank you, presiding officer. And can I also um, thank uh, Emma Harper for bringing forward this uh, motion today. Uh, like her, I come from a family of nurses. Um, I'm married to a nurse. Uh, both my brothers are nurses. And uh, I'm not sure we've clocked up as many hours of nursing practice as Emma, but we're getting there. Um, and I would also like to refer uh, members to my register of interest. I am a registered mental health nurse, and I currently hold an honorary contract with Greater Glasgow and Clyde Health Board, which allows me to continue my practice as a nurse. Florence Nightingale is often described as the lady with the lamp, but she was, as we can all appreciate, so much more than this. Not only did she challenge expectations, but she was a truly gifted healthcare professional, as skilled in the study of healthcare as the creation of new standards and practices, and as committed to research as statistical analysis, and a true pioneer in the planning of hospitals and wards. She was an innovator, introducing new strict cleanliness regimes that drastically reduced mortality on her wards, and she was compassionate, heading to the horrors of the Crimea War to help the wounded. Fundamental and radical service redesign is how nursing was born with Florence, and it's how it continues to stay relevant and at the forefront of healthcare. And my own experience in mental health nursing has borne this out. There has been a concerted effort to reduce the stigma around mental illness and we have encouraged people to access care and treatment at an earlier stage. We now talk about mental illness instead of shying away from it and that's a tremendous success that I've seen as a mental health nurse. But at the same time, these changes were difficult. Service users, carers, staff and the public were worried and concerned about bed and hospital closures, worried that services would not meet their expectations and they were worried about safety. Change is the one constant for nursing. 
We develop and adapt to new ways of working and new practice. In short, we move forward with what works rather than sticking with outdated ways that don't deliver the results we need. Florence Nightingale created and reformed nursing in part by redesigning wards, improving outcomes of care by reframing the environment. And in mental health nursing, we continue to follow the spirit of reform, moving care away from the existing models and existing hospital settings to move care into the community. We have to be open to discussion about what can be done differently and what can be done more effe effectively to do what is best for our patients. Service redesign is a term that can still instill fear, but really it's how nursing began. Changes to services can be challenging, but with the challenges come opportunities. Opportunities to make real and positive changes to real people's lives. This year, the International College of Nurses has chosen the theme, Nurses, a voice to lead, achieving the sustainable development goals for International Nurses Day. Every day, nurses' work has a significant impact in delivering sustainable development goals, not just in ensuring healthy lives and promoting well-being, but in areas such as education and poverty too. These social determinants of health are the conditions in which people grow, work and live. And the work of nurses across the world seeks to address these wider issues, not just their immediate clinical needs. Pauline Cafferkey, one of my constituents, is an exemplar of those dedication and nurses to help to improve the lives of those with health and social challenges. Pauline and so many other volunteer nurses work tirelessly to help people in Sierra Leone who were affected by Ebola. And Pauline herself became infected. Despite this, she's planning to return to Sierra Leone and will continue to help those who need assistance. Pauline and our nursing staff here in Scotland are at the forefront of healthcare, with nearly 60,000 nurses working across the NHS in Scotland to improve the care and the lives of our fellow citizens. Every day, each of our nurses contributes to service redesign, to developing and redefining best practice, each carrying on the work of Florence Nightingale. The Royal College of Nursing is running a thunderclap, a Twitter thunderclap, where we can all offer our support online. And you can also write about a nurse that has made a difference to your life or to your family's life through the Nurse Hero programme. And so, presiding officer, on the 12th of May, I asked the chamber to join with me in marking International Nurses Day in a small way. Let's tell our nurses we appreciate the amazing work they do and encourage the next generation of nurses too. Thank you very much. I call Doral Cameron, followed by Anna Sarwar. Mr Cameron, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Sadly, uh, I can't make it three nurses in a row, and I feel like I'm letting the side down. Um, but I'd like to begin by, by thanking Emma Harper for lodging this motion. And I, too, like to put on record my admiration and respect for our nursing staff across, across Scotland. Um, this chamber is definitely a richer place when MSPs from a wide variety of professional backgrounds uh, are able to bring that invaluable experience into debates like this. Um, and I do pay tribute to both uh, Claire Harper, sorry, Emma Harper and Claire Hohe for um, their contributions, um, which are informed by their day-to-day -day experience. Nurses are by and large the public face of the NHS in our hospitals and community health centres and do an incredibly tough job, often on unsociable working hours and as we heard earlier in today's debate, taking on increasing workload as demand grows. They are the bastions of our health service, and we must always remember that. As Emma Harbour in intimated in her motion, International Nurses Day was set up to, to coincide with the birth of Florence Nightingale, one of the most famous nurses in the world, who is largely credited as the founder of modern nursing. Her persona, as has been said, as the lady with the lamp, made her a beacon of hope to the soldiers who were injured during the Crimean War. However, it is her significant contribution to modern nursing that she is and should be best remembered for. Her book, Notes on Nursing, was published in 1859, yet many, if not all of its contents, continue to have stark relevance today. Today we talk about issues of hospital cleanliness. Florence Nightingale tackled this. Today we talk about the importance of diet. Florence Nightingale tackled this. Today we talk about making sure our homes are clean, ventilated and warm. Florence Nightingale tackled this. As Churchill said, those that fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And that springs to mind when we think and talk about Nightingale's observations on healthcare. 
One nurse that the motion doesn't mention, but I'd like to mention, is Elsie Inglis. And I, I want to mention her briefly as we debate this motion, because she was Scottish, a famous Scottish nurse. Not for that reason alone, but she was an incredible person. She founded the Scottish Women's Hospitals Unit, which provided nursing staff, as well as a variety of auxiliary personnel, to battlefields across the European continent, despite the incredible barriers that women faced at the time. Her pioneering work saved thousands of lives, and she and many others who go unrecognised in history should always be remembered. I've mentioned some of those famous and renowned female nurses because it is important to understand and remember that nursing is a predominantly female profession. The most recent statistics show that almost 90% of nursing staff in Scotland are female, with just under 60,000 women employed and around 7,000 men. Now, that's not to say we don't value our male nurses as much. Of course we do. Nursing is also a profession with vacancies, and I don't make this point to score a, polit I don't make this point to score a political point, but rather to raise awareness of the fact that all of us in this chamber need to do more to encourage more men and women to take up nursing as a profession. We need to promote this sector to young people who are about to leave school or university and are unsure of what path to take. Nursing can be extremely rewarding and provides people with an immeasurable number of important skills. And indeed, as we continue the shift of care from acute to community-led services, the importance of community nursing will grow significantly. Deputy Presiding Officer, nurses are extremely important in our NHS, and we must always recognise that. Uh, of course, yes. Marie Todd. Apologies for intervening during a member's debate. I know that's not the usual form, but I just wanted to state for the record that Eng Elsie Ingalls was a, a doctor, not a nurse. Well, uh, By the way, you can intervene in members' debates. It's not a precious re regime. That's, um, I will perhaps take, take that up with a member at a, at a later date, but uh, my information <laughs> was that she was a nurse. Um, but anyway, the, um, as I was just closing, uh, nurses are the lifeblood, Deputy Presiding Officer, of the health service, and without their work, the service wouldn't survive. I would like to state my thanks to the Royal College of Nursing for their service in representing nurses across Scotland and for their continued efforts to improve that service. And I would like to close by wishing all nurses the very best uh, wishes uh, on International Nurses' Day on Friday. Thank you very much, Mr Cameron. To be Anna Sarwar, to be followed by Alison Johnson. Mr Sarwar, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I start by thanking Emma Harper for bringing forward uh, this debate and directly congratulating her for her uh, immense service to the NHS and that of her family. I'm always struck by the number of people you come across who are NHS families who have uh, their brothers, their sisters, their aunts, their uncles, their sons, their daughters also going on to work in the profession and dedicating their lives to caring for our fellow citizens. So, uh, genuine thank you to Emma Harper and to all those people right across the country who dedicate their lives uh, to our National Health Service. Uh, I also want to put on record uh, all those uh, bodies and unions that represent our fabulous nurses, whether that be the RCN, I'm delighted to see that Theresa Fife uh, of the RCN is in the gallery today, or indeed other trade unions, including uh, Unison, who support uh, those nurses all year round. Emma Harper rightly mentioned uh, the Sustainable Development Goals uh, she mentioned the Scotland-Malawi um, project that we have uh, as a stall outside, um, just beside the members' gallery. I think it's important to recognise the role um, that we take for granted here, the fact that we have a universal healthcare system here in the United Kingdom, and that's an ambition I think that we should have right around the world for access to a universal healthcare system, no matter if you are from the poorest background or the most wealthiest background, no matter your race, your religion, your nationality, your gender, your sexuality, that you have a healthcare system that is there to care for you and doesn't matter about if whether you have money in your pocket or not. And I think that's an ambition that hopefully we can see come true through our work whether that be directly through the Department for International Development, something that I'm absolutely proud was introduced by the Labour government and then its budget trebled uh, under the Labour Prime Minister, or indeed whether that's individual healthcare workers who go from here to help spread uh, their own expertise and knowledge in other parts of the world. And Pauline Caffrey is just one of many, many examples of people who risk their own lives to go to other parts of the world, sometimes in the most dangerous places, to go and care uh, for other people. And just on that, I think it's important to say that we still do have challenges here uh, in Scotland in terms of our NHS workforce. Our NHS staff, uh, on a daily basis, perhaps have to come across people that have threatening behaviour, people who are in a very uh, difficult emotional situation, and they have to take that on the front line. And I think we owe them a huge debt of gratitude uh, for that. 
Um, and as has been mentioned by Donald Cameron, there are pressures and strains uh, on the NHS at the moment in Scotland. We've just had a debate uh, all through this afternoon about the stresses and strains on NHS staff right here um, at home. I, I do note with disappointment um, that we have just come from voting down a pay increase uh, for NHS staff into a debate that I'm sure all of us uh, want to be part of, which is celebrating International uh, Nurses' Day. Um, as the uh, nurse that told me this morning, Graham, that I met this morning said, goodwill is one thing, goodwill doesn't uh, put food on the table. And I think that's an important uh, thing for us to remember. And I hope all of us across uh, this parliament can resolve to work together, to not only champion the role of nurses on International Nurses' Day, but to actually champion the valuable role of nurses all year round, whether that be at home or indeed abroad, and that we can continue to have a national health service that is a gold standard beacon, not just for the rest of the United Kingdom, but is actually the gold standard beacon for places right around the world, so we can say you can do effective health care free at the point of need. Your society can recognise that we all come together, pay our dues, so we can care for all our members of our society, no matter what their background. That's a principle I'm so proud of in Scotland, that's a principle I'm proud of, that our nurses live and breathe every single day. And I hope we can all resolve to make that principle a reality for people right around the world. Thank you, Mr. Sarwar. I call Alison Johnson to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Ms. Johnson, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm proud to join others in this chamber celebrating International Nurses' Day, and I'd like to thank Emma Harper for securing this debate, for her contribution to nursing, and also for her passion and expertise on this issue. Nurses throughout our National Health Service and social care system do truly heroic work. We must celebrate their achievements and thank them for their dedication and tireless care. From our neonatal units to our hospices, nurses care for the most vulnerable and lead increasingly complex care in community settings. And I also want to thank all our healthcare support workers for the vital work they do, working alongside our nursing staff to support patients. In the time I have available today, I'd like to focus on the tremendous impact nurses have on children and young people's health. Sadly, not every family can take their newborn baby straight home from hospital. One in ten babies born in Scotland will be admitted to a neonatal unit. Neonatal nurses deliver very technically skilled care and support families through unimaginably stressful experiences. Unfortunately, recent surveys led by Bliss show that too many neonatal nurses are not getting the protected time they need for training and professional development. We should have comprehensive standards for becoming qualified in specialty and developing further in specialised clinical practice areas. But we must ensure that nurses have real opportunities to develop their skills and good staffing ratios are key to this. As our children grow older and move into education, school nurses provide child-centred primary care they can play a key role in tackling health inequalities in childhood. School nurses are trusted. They're well placed to help schools and families with income maximisation advice and provide universal, non-stigmatising mental health support. The government had indicated that school nurses would start to take on a refocused role this year or in 2018, working more with children who have additional support needs, with young carers and looked after children. And I hope the minister can update us on the progress of these plans. Strengthening preventative health care in schools is essential because we're seeing real increases in the number of children and young people with mental health problems or who need intensive emotional support. Nurses make up over 40% of the total CAMS workforce and demands on the sector are intense. The Royal College of Nursing has been calling for continued additional investment in CAMS to enhance early intervention and preventative work and ensure a well-trained, well-supported workforce. Nurses working in our communities are at the very centre of early intervention. I support the expansion of the Family Nurse Partnership, an important preventative health programme, giving younger first-time mothers additional support during pregnancy and through their baby's early years. Evaluations show this approach improves antenatal health, promotes strong attachment and leads to better health and developmental outcomes for children. This is all because of the therapeutic relationship between specialist nurses and new parents. Making this focus support available to more parents aged up to 24 is a good step forward. This key relationship between nurses and patients is the heart of our health service. I'm proud to celebrate it today and to ensure it's at the centre of our health and social care system in future. We know there are real challenges in recruitment and retention in Scotland and we must do more to provide more training, 
opportunities in remote and rural areas to attract new entrants to the profession a bit later in life too. Due to demographic changes, the role that nurses play supporting the elderly and vulnerable will change too. We know a high level of nursing posts are vacant in our care homes and as health and social care become more integrated, we've got to have robust workforce planning to ensure that nurses can support people well in their homes for longer. Presiding officer, it's often said that in this city we have more statues of animals than women. And um, as the vice convener of the Cross Party Group on Animal Welfare, you know, I, I welcome those statues, but I think we could do far more. Um, last year in this city, a plaque was unveiled um, commemorating the nurses who died during the uh, World War I, 500 of them. I think the sacrifice, um, the contribution that nurses have made is often overlooked in this society, and I would certainly welcome a campaign to see that recognised with a statue in this city. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Stuart Stevenson to be followed by Gordon Linters. Mr Linters will be the last speaker in the open debate. Mr Stevenson, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. And first of all, thanks to uh, Emma Harper for providing uh, the opportunity uh, to discuss this important subject. And perhaps uh, in her motion, um, the thing that uh, I most uh, noticed was the uh, name Mary Seacole, not someone of whom I'd heard anything in my life whatsoever. And so uh, the opportunity to go and investigate who she was and what she did with her life is one I very much welcome. Um, now, like everyone else, of course, I have a few nurses in my family. Um, my father-in-law, psychiatric nurse, my sister-in-law, psychiatric nurse, both uh, trained in Inverness in the 1950s. My aunt, Stuart, another Stuart Stevenson, uh, and her sister, Daisy, who registered as nurses in Bradford, 1925. Um, my niece Susan, uh, who is uh, now a, a transplant coordinator in Queensland, Australia, and of course my sister Mary. But perhaps most critically from my point of view, my own five months uh, working as a nurse in 1964 in Strathedon Psychiatric uh, Hospital. Uh, and if you think uh, things are a bit difficult now. Let me just say we did 108 hour fortnight, 12 days on, two days off, uh, for £6.50 pence a week. Um, and the staffing ratios were horrendous. Uh, one weekend when we worked double shifts, there were two of us looking after 32 physically ill psychiatric patients. Uh, it would just never happen today. So progress is being made. But I think one of the important things we should think about nurses today and give them support for, is that the nurses today are highly trained, they have skills and knowledge that when I was a nurse in 64, and all my antecedents as ancestors and relatives definitely did not have. Um, today, the nurses are trained to a level that is higher, more effective than my father was as a general practitioner. Uh, qualifying in 1945 at the comparatively elderly age of uh, uh, 44. Uh, my experience of nurses as an individual uh, is universally uh, good. Uh, my campaign scar when a dog bit me in uh, the Falkirk uh, West uh, by-election in 2000, that was a nurse, put the six stitches in my hand and allowed me to return to canvassing uh, for our candidate. Unsuccessfully, I may say, she wasn't that successful in repairing <laughs> me, obviously. Uh, and uh, the five weeks I spent uh, in hospital in Bangor uh, some 30 years ago for a condition that I will not share with you, uh, but it was one you will, none of you uh, will wish to experience. Not critically ill, but certainly needing uh, nursing. So I'm grateful to nurses in my personal life. Um, it's worth saying, in modern times, of course, I have a particular relationship, as many of my age group will do, with the Macmillan nurses, because... Uh, as one gets to an age, more of one's friends and relatives are reaching the end of their lives. And I think the work the Macmillan nurses do, in particular, in supporting people to end their lives with dignity and comfort in, the, in their own homes, is absolutely uh, magnificent. The campaign with the motto, Nurses, a voice to lead, sounds to me absolutely spot on. Because nurses are important now in primary care in a way that they did not used to be. I'd rather see the practice nurse for most of the things uh, that I would wish to go to my GP for. Fortunately, 
I don't even know the name of my GP. That's how infrequent a visit I am, and I hope to uh, remain uh, in that position. I'll just end, uh, presiding officer, by saying some nurses are brave beyond the point of foolhardiness. My best man, uh, his mother, was a nurse, and she met her husband uh, during the last war in a hospital where he had been taken uh, because he'd been badly burned in his tank being blown up. And uh, such was the personal charisma of this nurse uh, that uh, my best man's father proposed to his nurse and married her three weeks after meeting her. But the real trick is he was badly burned, bandaged from the neck upwards, and when she got married to him, she hadn't even seen his face. Now, that is nursing bravery of the highest order. But I can tell you, it worked, and it worked extremely well. But ending on a humorous note does not in any way diminish the very serious and valuable work that nurses throughout our health service do on behalf of us all. Let us hope we never have to meet them, but we know they're there when we need them. I never fail to wonder where you're taking us with your speeches, but I never fall asleep. Uh, Mr. Lindhurst. Deputy Presiding Officer, it is a great pleasure for me to be speaking today in this members' debate led by Emma Harper, uh, not least because my own mother was a nurse, and I, I well remember her telling the story of how she became a nurse. At the time, she worked as a young secretary in an architect's firm in Ayr, and one day the senior partner came dancing into her office, singing about her becoming another Florence Nightingale. So for some reason, he had received the letter confirming her acceptance for nurses training in Glasgow rather than her. And it was not too many years later that my Aunt Esther followed her big sister Edith into the nursing profession, making it a Murray sister double act. Now, International Nurses Day, or week in the United States, America, and Canada, gives us all the opportunity to reflect on the outstanding work that is done by nurses across the world, and also to reflect on the particular invaluable abilities that are required of those in the nursing profession. A selfless, a caring, a patient, an understanding, and a dedicated attitude and approach these are just some of the qualities associated with these important workers in our health services. These are people that we depend upon to help us through some of the toughest times we experience in life. Or for some of those closest to us, these are the people who have been there for them in the most difficult of times. I know that many of us in this chamber have pointed already to examples of nurses in their lives or others who have taken up these roles. And that is exactly what this day encourages us to do. I know that I and my brothers and sisters all benefited from our mother's skills and training as a nurse. And I know that countless others did as well, including in my mother's later life when she worked as a volunteer nurse at children's summer camps. It is important on a day like this to remember the debt we owe to all of our healthcare professionals who work to help save life and limb. And particularly, of course, on this day, to remember our nurses. When the Murray sisters worked in the Gorbals in Glasgow about the late 1950s, they could walk alone through the streets, night or day, in their nurses' uniform without any fear of harm. Sadly, it is not uncommon nowadays to hear stories of a lack of respect being shown not just to our nurses in our hospitals, for example, but even to other essential emergency services. So in closing, I would like to say that it is important that we re-emphasize the need for respect for our nurses and the work that they do. Nurses are essential in our society and deserve all our respect. I hope that by celebrating this day, including here in the Scottish Parliament, we can reinforce that message. Thank you very much, Mr Lindhurst. And it's always interesting to hear backgrounds of, of members in here that we wouldn't hear otherwise except in members' debates. Uh, I now call on Maureen Watt, close for the Government Minister, up to seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And I too would like to thank Emma Harper for bringing this very important debate 
to the Chamber today and congratulate her on that and on her and her sister's contribution to the NHS. It is amazing and must be congratulated. As Emma said, nurses make up the largest single profession in our NHS. They are at the heart and care of every single person, young or old. They work not just in our hospitals, but in GP practices, home and care homes, and in communities across the country. And every person in this chamber has often literally been touched by a nurse and our lives improved because of that encounter. It's my privilege as a Scottish minister to be able to thank each and every nurse across the country for their commitment and professionalism. And on behalf of all the people of Scotland, rec uh, recognising International Nurses Day, to thank you, uh, the nurses, and your unstinting service. We really do value and appreciate you. The government is committed to supporting our nurses and ensuring that we have a sustainable workforce who have fulfilling careers and are able to play the fullest part in delivering the health and social care Scotland needs both today and in the future. And Scotland has a long and proud history of supporting our skilled nurses. The first nursing unit to be set up at a British university was opened in 1956 at Edinburgh University by another nursing heroine that hasn't been mentioned this evening, Elsie Stevenson. But nursing has changed beyond all recognition from the pioneering days of Florence Nightingale and Mary Sicoli. I'm really surprised, presiding officer, that my general knowledge in this occasion is better than um, Stuart Stevenson's because I did know about Mary Sicoli. And in fact, when I was passing, um, when I was on Clapham High Street in London the other month, um, there was a Mary Sicola Centre and I was able to tell my daughter uh, who she was. So one up on Stuart Stevenson for once. <laughs> um, so, um, as Donald Cameron mentioned, though, the basic commitments of, of nursing, the basic hygiene and the food and the diet that Florence Nightingale pioneered are very much uh, still to the fore, but the equipment um, and skill required by our professional graduates delivering increasing complex care for a more diver diverse population in a wide range of setting is certainly uh, challenging and it's more important than ever that we ensure that we have the nursing workforce that is fit for the future with the right numbers, the right skills and the right opportunities and the right support. Um, and it is important that we make sure that everyone who wants and has a desire to go and an aptitude and an ability to go into nursing can do so and that's why our Chief Nursing Officer has commissioned a review of the ways to support and widen access to nursing education and careers, and that's being led by Professor Paul Martin, uh, CBE. Um, so, in terms of supporting um, nursing, the Scottish Government is delivering a record number of qualified nurses and midwives, over 3,400 more nursing and mid midwifery staff working in our NHS today compared to five years ago, creating an extra hundred, a thousand extra training places for nurses and midwives over the course of this parliament, and supporting our student nurses to keep their tuition free, protecting their bursary, as many have mentioned this evening, and creating a, a million pound discretionary fund offered as a safety net for those students in greater, greatest needs and transforming nursing roles to maximise nurses' vital and unique role in the health and social care system, and developing a fresh vision for nursing in Scotland, which our Chief Nursing Officer is taking forward in developing in partnership with nurses across the country. And we're investing three million to train an additional 500 advanced nurse practitioners as part of our health and social care system. Uh, plus a further two million to enhance the skills of general practice nurse, nurses in supporting the wider primary care transformation aims. And of course, we are committed to enshrining safe staffing in law, which is placing groundbreaking, which is groundbreaking work um, 
looking at our nursing and midwifery workload and workforce planning tools and putting that on a statutory footing. Uh, it's also important to mention, of course, the return to practice schemes because, scheme because we have a rich resource of former nurses who have dropped for, from the register for one reason or another. Um, and we have the three years uh, uh, we announced in January 15, uh, 450,000 funding over three years to, introduce, to reintroduce a national return to practice scheme. And I know my own university and my constituency of RGU is at uh, the forefront of that. Um, as others have mentioned, in, in terms of an international context, we know about Florence, nursing, Florence Nightingale's nursing team in, in the Crimea and of Mary Sukola not being allowed to join uh, Mary, uh, Florence Nightingale's nursing team, but she went anyway, which uh, showed her determination. And um, it is important, as Claire Hockey mentioned, uh, about the number of nurses and clinicians who uh, go to other countries to learn about other ways of working, but also in helping, as many mentioned tonight, uh, for uh, achievement of the development and goal goals. For example, in Malawi alone, we've supported Scottish NHS clinicians to work with nurses at Malawi's major hospitals to improve their skills, including working with oncology nurses at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Blantyre to develop a multidisciplinary approach uh, to cancer treatment. And we've supported a visit to the UK of Malawian breast care nurses for experience in diagnostics and follow-up clinics. And I myself have visited uh, Mount Melange Hospital in the south of, uh, uh, of Malawi, uh, which has a lot of connections uh, with Scotland. So, <clears throat> as we speak, nurses are working away, saving lives uh, and comforting those in pain and delivering world care, uh, world leading care in our communities and in our hospitals. And in terms of taking forward a recognition of International Day, uh, the, Scottish, we, the Scottish Global Health Collaborative seeks to create a framework for volunteering in global health, which recognises challenges and constraints, as well as the benefits at home and overseas. And it intends to develop guidance, which is helpful to both clinical and non-clinical staff for those in training and those trained and their employ employing organisations. So, uh, ladies, uh, uh, Presiding Officer, we are in safe hands, not just on International day, Nurses' Day, but every single day. And we thank you, the nurses, and appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the debate. I close this meeting of Parliament.